do it. Do you know what I mean? Blagging it. you got to admire them both, yeah. and I wish them both the best of luck. And I hope, I hope they put on a great show, which I know they will. As I say, Mike's training hard on his videos and stuff, and Jake Paul's always in shape. So it's, uh, I'm looking forward to... We're together. I'm named after this guy. It makes him more of a legend. Yes, yes. This yes. man is a bona fide, living, alive legend. World Boxing Council heavyweight champion Tyson Fury has sent a strong and special message ahead of his fight with Jake Paul on July 20th. Soon after, I came down with mental health struggle. So no one is ever, ever, ever safe from mental health. The Gypsy King did not only reveal his picks for the bout, he was also keen in dropping some words for the baddest man on the planet, whose he's widely known to be named after. I keep hearing talk of people saying that I should retire or I'm gonna retire soon or whatever. I ain't retiring anywhere. Wet your appetite with. I ain't going nowhere. Nowhere. His words came after his revelation to keep on fighting and were both straightforward and thoughtful, coming after some controversial statements some weeks back. Let's get right in. The upcoming bout between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul has attracted several comments and messages from numerous professionals in the sport. On March 7th, the fight between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul was announced to the boxing world, receiving a wide range of opinions and views from professionals like Joe Egan, Roy Jones Jr., Joe Rogan, Anthony Joshua, Francis and Dana White. Stadium. Um It'd be fantastic for the guys. Both getting paid, both going to put on a show. I just, I just don't know what's not to like. Oh, okay, the guy's 57 years old, but he's a former undisputed world heavyweight king, and one guy who plays computers for a living. And he's Plenty of boxing fans, former fighters, and members of the media have shared their thoughts on the upcoming contest, with many expressing their concerns. This is because Tyson will be 58 years of age on fight night, and more than 30 years older than Paul. The YouTuber is in prime physical condition and has won nine of his 10 professional fights. Tyson, on the other hand, last fought in any capacity in 2020 against Roy Jones Jr. in an exhibition match. Many other topics and talking points have been raised by these professionals, and the latest of them to discuss this is Tyson Fury, who also had a special message for Mike Tyson. It's no news that the former undisputed world heavyweight champion has inspired the reigning World Boxing Council champion Tyson Fury to become the champion he is today. Hey, Tyson Fury here. I just want to wish my buddy do the business, smash his face in, get up there, my boy, all the way to the m***ing bank, man. Do it. The baddest man on the planet had a big impact on Tyson Fury's life, and it's become a casual fact to the hardcore boxing fans, and even the less passionate ones that Tyson Fury's father, John Fury, named the Gypsy King after the boxing legend. Until date, Tyson Fury has great respect for Iron Mike Tyson, and takes inspiration from him as well. To portray how impressive the relationship between the pair is, Fury had once responded to an X post asking who would win between himself and Tyson, who Fury is named after, and he kept it classy. Like Mike Tyson already said, it doesn't matter who you think wins as I'm named after him, so he already has won, Fury tweeted. A baby named after the champ, the baby becomes the champ wow. And this is not the first time Fury has spoken in admiration of Tyson. As he previously told The Ring magazine, a lot of people underestimate Mike Tyson's speed as well. Yes, it was the speed that was coming. It wasn't like the one punch, ah, what single slow punch. It was fast and it was coming left up, right up, down, side to side. It was coming from all angles and he was very ferocious and speedy and he could knock a man out with either hand, as we have seen. Sort of, we're brought up, the only thing we want to do is fight, which is huh. why I've become a boxer. Yeah. Uh, you were named after Mike. Named after Mike, wow, yes. That shit happened. That happened. <laughs> yeah. no, I'll tell you how it happened. Oh, it's shit and just that and the other, but I bet they still watch it. Who, who's not intrigued? We're talking about it now. Yeah, exactly. Right, two more from me. And the fear factor as well, a lot of people going into the boxing ring were already beaten by Mike Tyson. And the baddest man on the planet has in similar fashion returned the compliment in the past, saying in an interview, Tyson Fury proved over and over again that he's the best. Tyson Fury is the champ, the reigning champ, and is going to be the champ for a long time if he chooses to be, unless we get some new guy up.
On another occasion, the Gypsy King uploaded of a screenshot of him and his son enjoying a video chat with the youngest heavyweight champion in boxing history with the caption, Gypsy Prince loves Uncle Mike Tyson. And while the normal trend is for legends to have special messages and words of advice for their protégés and other boxers of this generation who look up to them, it's taken a different twist this time, as a protégé is the one with the message for his idol this time. So it was you. Really? So when I was born August the 12th, 1988, I came into the world and I was eight weeks premature and I was, I was dying. I wasn't supposed to live. And when I lived, uh, my dad said, I'm going to call you after my favorite heavyweight, uh, Tyson. Tyson Fury disclosed this in an interview where he was asked about the upcoming bout between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul. But before this interview, he had also talked about the matchup in a previous interview, which he came under fire for. Earlier, when Fury was asked about his thoughts on the fight between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul, Fury claimed he saw the fight as a unique opportunity for the sport to attract a broader audience. Speaking to the stomping ground, Fury expressed his support for the spectacle, acknowledging the significance of having a boxing legend like Tyson face off against a YouTube sensation like Paul. Fury remarked, You've got a legend in Mike Tyson. You've got a YouTube boxer. He has come into the game and blew it up and he's got millions of followers and millions of views and millions of eyes. Good, bad or indifferent. Some people love him, some people hate him. So I think it's a really good spectacle for boxing. Brings a lot of people to the game. Getting paid, both going to put on a show. Good luck to them, they're both going to make what I call a shit ton of money out of it. So isn't that what it's about? 80,000 fans, I mean what a spectacle it will be. However, in his latest interview, Tyson Fury had more to say and explain to those who have come for his head after his earlier interview. He said, I know many people have said things about me since I said the fight was good for the sports. I think anyone can think whatever they want to think. Everybody has the freedom of speech and I just use mine. I only spoke about the popularity of the matchup and the financial benefits. I said it's a good spectacle. Yes, it is. There's nothing anyone can do about it. Even those who are fearful and who claim the sport is being damaged have nothing to do. And since we can't do anything, why don't we all embrace it? That's what I think. Be boxing or Jay Paul shouldn't be boxing. Good luck to them. They're both going to make what I call a shit ton of money out of it. So isn't that what it's about? 80,000 fans. I mean, what a spectacle it'll be. Yeah, I've been, I've been to that uh, stadium when Billy Joe fought Canelo. It's a great stadium. Um, it'd be fantastic for the guys. The Gypsy King then moved on to make his pick ahead of the match, an exercise he wasn't chance to undertake in his earlier interview. He responded, I feel both fighters have great chances. Mike Tyson has the speed, the power, the experience, the aura and all. Jake Paul has youthfulness, and I think that's a huge thing to have. They both stand great chances. But you know who I'd pick, definitely. I think Tyson would win. It's a win for Tyson. I'm not sure Jake Paul is the boxer to beat him. It would have been a tough choice if it was a more experienced and true boxer. But Jake Paul is no match for Tyson, even when Tyson is 80. That's our stadium when Billy Joe fought Canelo. It's a great stadium. Um... You say, oh, it's shit, and just sat in the other, but I bet they still watch it. Who, who's not intrigued? We're talking about it now. Yeah, exactly. Right, two more from me. It was after this that he delivered the special message to Tyson. The message was all in one, an encouragement, an expression of love and advice. I've always been a big fan of Tyson, and I wish him well as he returns to the ring. I hope he comes out safe and healthy. It'd be beautiful to see him win. I would come rooting for him. I'd also not want him bothered about Jake Paul. He can be so naughty and nervy at times. Mike should do his stuff in the ring, even better than Tommy did. It must be remembered that the Gypsy King and his family members had once had an intense face-off against Jake Paul shortly before his younger brother, Tommy Fury, fought and defeated the problem child. It all started when their bout was initially fixed for a date that was later canceled. Ahead of the clash, a press conference was held that saw Tommy, Tyson and their father John Fury live in attendance while Jake Paul chimed in through a live stream by a pool. While this was supposed to build hype for the fight, it was the elder Fury that stole the show, going back and forth with the YouTuber throughout the entirety of the press conference. The YouTuber turned boxer was participating via a video call from across the Atlantic and told Furious Senior he is living off his son's achievements, branding him nobody. John hit back with taunts that he'd beat the hell out of him if he ever went to America. 
Perhaps the biggest moment came when Father John Fury told Jake Paul to take off his sunglasses in order to see the fear in the eyes of the influencer. When Paul refused and told Tommy to shut your bitches up for me, John stood up and looked as though he was going to punch the television that Paul was speaking through. But that was not the only fiery moment that occurred between John Fury and Jake Paul during this entertaining and bizarre press conference. Later on, Fury made a prediction that his son would knock out the YouTuber and then fornicate with his lady in front of him. You know, when Tommy knocks you out, don't you? He's gonna bend your girlfriend over and do her like a dog in front of you. So I'm telling you straight up, Fury said. What well, did you I, say? Listen, you know now you're swearing now. You know when Tommy knocks you out, don't you? He's gonna bend your girlfriend over and do her like a dog in front of you. Lonnie. So I'm telling you straight you're, up. You're, you're, you're cringing. That's where we're coming from. You are Things got somehow more intense towards the end as John Fury once again tried to get Paul to remove his sunglasses. But again, Paul was having none of it. In return, he offered something for Fury to do instead. I can see the fear in your eyes because you won't take their glasses off. And that's some first class nonsense, how he won't remove his eyewear. Get the glasses off, you idiot, John Fury said. Slob on my knob, slob on my knob real good, sir, Paul responded. You ain't got a knob to snob, you've got a fanny between your legs, Fury retorted. The wild exchanges between John Fury and Jake Paul during this press conference left some saying that this was the real fight to make. That is a fight between John Fury and Jake Paul, a fight that will surely never see the light of the day. Another altercation occurred when Jake Paul was ringside for rival Tommy Fury's exhibition with late replacement Raleigh Lambert in Dubai. The YouTube star Paul was unimpressed with Fury's display in the ring and hurled abuse at the British star from his position in the commentary booth. As a result, John Fury, the father of the Furies, became incensed with Paul's comments and joined his son in demanding the YouTuber climb into the ring before ripping his shirt off and attempting to duck under the ropes. Despite insults being traded, a confrontation fizzled out with security, able to step in to defuse the threatening situation. At that point, talks and disagreements were ongoing as regards the bout between Jake Paul and Tommy Fury. After returning from Dubai, Fury Sr. claimed Paul had no interest in agreeing a fight for 2023, despite the YouTube star's claim an agreement had been reached for a February event. He has had a lot to say, hasn't he? Like I say, men meet before mountains. Fury said, when discussing the altercation. He had his chance to showcase what he had, and he let himself down miserably. It showed he wouldn't fight Tommy. He wouldn't even get in the ring, was terrified, and he kept walking backwards. He just doesn't want to fight Tommy. I had a spare roll of toilet paper on me for him. It was in my bag. I popped it in in case Jake Paul needs it. At one point, I was going to get it out and throw it at him. I took pity on him. He is only from a YouTube world in my eyes. I have seen what he is like up close and personal. If he gets in with a real fighter like Tommy Fury, he will get knocked the hell out. Paul and Fury had been set to fight on two separate occasions, with the pair due to clash once before Fury withdrew after breaking a rib. They then signed a renewed deal later on, but the bout collapsed after the Briton was banned from traveling to the US. It appeared the pair would finally come to an agreement, but Fury missed Paul's new deadline to secure the bout. Afterwards, promotional outfit Global Titans confirmed they made a new offer to the YouTuber, who was initially unwilling to stage the fight himself after losing money previously. However, he has since issued a response to the offer writing on Twitter, One thing I'm never going to do is do business with people who don't treat fighters well. Pay Paul Bamba. Despite that Paul's message casted doubt on the fight, it was all fixed to another date. And when it was refixed, the fight ended in a split decision win for Tommy Fury. When asked about the controversy, Hearn said in an interview, I thought it was disgusting to be honest with you. You've got the younger generation watching that. Even, actually, for one time, I felt a little bit for Frank Warren because I've been there on a much less cringe stage with KSI and Logan Paul. Frank was embarrassed. The language is terrible. I like beef. I love it. But for me, it's a bad look. But John also responded and said, Back at you, Eddie Hearn, mentioning the Furies again saying to me at the press conference is embarrassing, distasteful, disrespectful. Well, listen, mate, when you live in a glass house and you're throwing boulders at people, you can expect one to land back on your head at any time, mate. There's such a thing as karma, Eddie. I know you're not doing so well at the moment and BT and Frank Warren are smashing you to pieces on all roads, but everybody has their day, mate. 
Listen, I'm not trying to be anything other than what I am, a raggle-taggle gypsy. I'm not trying to be royalty. I'm not trying to be a gentleman. I'm just being me. He then added, if people can get offended from what I'm saying, it's a fight game. People are here smashing one another to pieces, trying to knock people out and hurt people. John Fury also hit back at Hearn on Instagram, writing, So a few little bits of unsavory banter and people take it out of text, and I can't help that. I'm man enough to apologize to all the people who don't get it and don't get me. To those people, no harm meant, and I'll apologize to everybody offended, but that's me. I'm not a gentleman, not trying to be one. I am what I am. But Eddie, you've just got a problem, mate, with the Furies, because you aren't getting paid out of them, are you? That's why you're slagging them and jumping on every floating log that you think might discredit a fury. But that's just you, mate, because you're heavy with the green-eyed monster. And you're doing it in a glass house, mate. So be careful what you say about others. Look in the mirror and have a long, hard think about your own life, your own family, before you call others. You know what I'm talking about, pal. You know what I'm talking about. So if we don't want to go any further with all this nonsense, Eddie, say nice things about the Furies. Because John Fury will bury you. I'll bury you. You'll wish you'd never heard the Fury name. So at the end of the day, pal, let's be nice to one another. Work alongside each other. Not be jealous of anybody's good fortune. Tyson's the best in the world, mate. He's had to prove it. He's had to earn his millions, and he's done that, pal. So credit him, not discredit him, and you'll go up in everybody's estimations, John Fury said. However, what was unique about Jake Paul and Tommy Fury's bout that must have gotten to Tyson Fury was the fact that Jake Paul always involved the Fury family in his jests and not just his opponent. But it wasn't only Jake Paul that has had a clash with the Furies, especially John Fury. Even Mike Tyson had a clash with him some months back when he trained Francis in the preparations for his bout against Tyson Fury. At the pre-fight press conference of the match between Tyson Fury and Francis, the elder Fury, after claiming he wasn't scared of anyone, dropped a challenge for Mike Tyson. Here I am. Any man alive wants to fight John Fury, I'm ready to go. Mike Tyson, what have you got to say to that? The world is going to see what's going to happen to your man. Your man will get his head boxed off and stopped. Don't you worry about that. If I'm wrong, me and you will fight straight after. Whatever the outcome, me and you will fight. Initially ignoring John Fury, Tyson laughed the comments off and kept his focus on Francis's victory, repeatedly emphasizing that Francis will be the heavyweight champion of the world. When he was to respond to John Fury's challenge at the press conference, he gave a brief response. He's been chasing me for 40 years. Before he could say more, Francis cut in and gave his suggestion. I'll take care of your son and Mike Tyson will take care of you. How about that? Mike Tyson will handle you. John seemed to drop the challenge at the press conference, but he picked it up again after making claims that Mike Tyson should stop the embarrassment he's bringing to himself by training Francis. Don't embarrass yourself, Mike. Honestly, he can't beat my son. Just be a man and say we've come here to try our hardest, but we're messing with the best in the world. Then from nowhere, John dropped the final challenge for Mike just about the end of the conference. I'm not saying I can beat this great man. I'm not saying I'll beat you, Mike. But I'll fight you and do the best I can. That's who my mother bred. A fighting man. With his final challenge, he seemed to be conceding defeat already. However, with the evidence of the pre-fight press conference, it's become quite clear why John Fury has lashed out at Mike Tyson so angrily. However, that wasn't all. How about that? Mike, no, let me tell you, mate. I'm here. I'm here, pal. He's been checking for 40 so years. years. Things became more complicated when Mike Tyson dropped a controversial statement when he was asked about John Fury's challenge. Tyson was both merciless and brutal in his comments. So, I've seen that big Fury idiot doing what he does best. Talking. I tell you this. If John Fury puts my name in his mouth one more time, I'll come and fight that idiot in his yard or Billy Joe Saunders fucking yard or on Maka fucking beach while his son watches, Mike Tyson said. Oh, I've seen that big Fury idiot doing what he does best, talking. I tell you this, if John Fury puts my name in his mouth one more time. I've took this clown's joke on the chin because this fool named his overgrown jolly green giant son after me. But not anymore, John. You say my name just one more fucking time and you just watch. 
I don't need to get angry on the internet like a little boy. I remain calm. And when we meet in your yard or Billy Joe Saunders yard, you'll wish you left this motherfucker right here alone. I've took this clown's jokes on the chin because this fool named his overgrown jolly green fucking giant son after me. But not anymore. Regardless of whatever might have happened at the presser for the fight between Tyson Fury and Francis, the Gypsy King seemed to have put all those behind him and has come to honor his hero and idol like he's always done. One thing remains obvious, however. John Fury has been the main character in most brawls involving the family, with Tyson typically maintaining a calm demeanor. However, Tyson Fury would be looking to also follow his hero's victory against Jake Paul with a victory against Alexander Usyk when they lock horns later this year. And that's all for now in the world of boxing. If you enjoyed watching this video, kindly react by clicking the like button below. For the very best updates on news, moments, events, and actions in the world of boxing, stay connected with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel and don't forget to turn on notifications to get alerted when we drop quality contents like this.